Rachel Ellering makes her return to Impact Wrestling. Scott Demore teases that TNA brand may be coming back. Rebellion is right around the corner. And when will we see crowds again at an Impact Wrestling event? All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. In case you haven't noticed, I've been away for a little bit. I took a little bit of a hiatus, but I am back. Shooting Up North is back, and we're here to talk Impact Wrestling. And real quick, in case you don't already know from my last uh, few podcasts, if you remember, I do have my own YouTube channel. So please head on over, check it out, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Lots of great content on there, but we're here for Shooting Up North today, right here on the Impact Lounge. It's good to be back. Good to be talking Impact Wrestling. So let's get right into it. Rachel Ellering has returned. She has returned to Impact Wrestling. Uh, she was um, in Impact Wrestling, I think, briefly back in 2017, but she's back now. Uh, she was revealed as Jordan Grace's mystery partner uh, for the Impact the, the Knockouts Tag Team title match at Rebellion. So it's going to be um, Tasha Steeles, Kira Hogan, the champions defending against Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. And then it was a really good uh, debut. I just wish there was a, a crowd, but we're going to talk about crowd shortly. Uh, but it would have been nice for her to hear the, the crowd cheering. But she it was a great debut. She came in like a ball of fire, came to Jordan Grace's aid. And uh, boom, Rachel Ellering is uh, in Impact Wrestling. And I, I looked, I did some research. It says she signed to Impact Wrestling. I don't know how long. Uh, usually it's a three-year deal, but I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate. I didn't confirm anything, but I do see that she she has signed with Impact Wrestling. So Rachel Ellering is with Impact Wrestling. Great signing there. Uh, great new face. Great fresh new face in Impact Wrestling. Very excited to see Rachel Ellering. And I'm looking forward to a great match at Rebellion. And I think they're going to win the belts. I think they're going to win the belts. I, I know Jordan Grace, her contract is up, uh, from what I understand, from what I've been reading, is up in uh, next month, actually. And uh, I don't know if um, she has resigned if or not. Nothing's been announced. Uh, but... But regardless, I, I think I think they're going to win the belts. I think they're going to win the belts, but also I think there's a chance that Jordan Grace is not resigning, and Rachel Ellering during the course of the match turns on Jordan Grace, and then Jordan Grace puts Rachel Ellering over in a in a match on Impact Wrestling before she leaves. So that's that that's another scenario. But I, I have a feeling Grace and um and Ellering are going to win uh, the Knockouts uh, Tag Team Titles. It's going to be a great match. It's going to be a great match uh, regardless. And I'm um, really looking forward to it. And uh, it's good to see Rachel Ellering. Good to see some uh, some new talent. Let's let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep getting this new talent in. You know, and um, I know there's a lot of um, good talent out there. And um, it's good to see Rachel Ellering um, making the decision to join Impact Wrestling. And... Um, what can I say? It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a really good match uh, between Tasha Steeles and Kara Hogan. And uh, we'll see what she brings to the table. I mean, I'm sure down the road we're going to see Rachel Ellering one on one with Diana Perrazzo, uh for the for the knockouts title because there's no way that Diana Perrazzo is going to lose uh, the belt to Daniel Dashwood uh, at Rebellion. No way, not a chance. I don't see that happening at all. And um, I say down the road we'll see uh, Rachel Ellering going after the the knockouts title. And uh, that should be a great match as well. Yeah, let's just keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. Scott Demore also. Scott Demore was talking to um, Wrestling Perspective. And um, uh, he uh, teased that the TNA brand, the TNA brand could be making a return. I know we've heard about this in the past. Uh, they teased it when Moose was the TNA uh, heavyweight champion. Uh, they were going to bring TNA back. and It was going to have its own standalone show. But now Scott Demore is is teasing that the TNA brand could uh, make the return. Um, let me just read the article here. Uh, it says, if you pick TNA making a return in the 2021 uh, sweepstakes, you may well be in luck. During an appearance on the Wrestling Perspective podcast, Impact Wrestling Executive Vice President Scott Demore discussed how the TNA brand could make a return. Um, 
This is Scott DeMore talking here. There's a quote from Scott DeMore. It says, as we come out of this pandemic environment and get back out there, get back out there, certainly that's a possibility. It could, it's a possibility that TNA brand could return. I think it's one of the things, one of the things many, and certainly not at the top of the list, but one of the things that the pandemic has robbed us of, the opportunity to see the return of TNA um, and suggesting um, that the TNA brand could be used as a showcase for the knockouts division, Scott Demore added, we have so many unbelievable knockouts. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll end up getting continuing, maybe we'll end up continuing to grow the knockouts division and give them their own separate platform, um, says Scott Demore. So that, that's good news. I mean, I wouldn't mind, but, but here's my take on it. Here's my take. Why? Why? Um, nothing against knockouts, but why? Why a knockouts um, show? Why a knockout show? Uh, here's here's my uh, here's my take. Here's my uh, <laughs> here's my two cents on it. Total nonstop impact is a great name. You don't have to call it TNA. Just call it no, total nonstop impact. It would be a great name for a new talent showcase. Just think a new talent showcase. Total nonstop action. Put the show on YouTube. You know, and you could bring in new knockouts and 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 feature them on there as well. But it doesn't have to be strictly knockouts. I think TNA should be a brand where you develop new stars. You could have the TNA champion. It doesn't have to be a world champion. It could be the TNA champion, um, but uh, have its own separate show where you recruit new talent, put them on that show, and groom them for the main show, the main Impact Wrestling show. That's my opinion. And you know how I feel about getting new talent. It's, it's something that they have to do. I mean, you know, Ring of Honor does it with um, with um, Future of Honor. AEW is doing it with AEW Dark. You know, New Japan Pro Wrestling has the Young Lions. You know, WWE has NXT. MLW, uh, Corp Bauer is always scoping for new talent. Impact Wrestling needs to get on that. Impact Wrestling needs to get on that, and and they need to um, they need to give a uh, they need to get. Um, a show that uh, specializes in in displaying and showcasing new talent. And you can even have like Eddie Edwards or Sammy Callahan show up and take on the new talent in like the main event. That, that would be fine. They do that on AEW Dark. And uh, I think that's the route they should take. That's 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 me talking as a fan. I, I would love to see that. And I wouldn't put it on Impact Plus. I would put it on... I would put it on YouTube, like, like AEW Dark, just a one-hour show on YouTube once a week. Put it, um, well, you have you can't put it on before or the Impact Show because you have uh, BTI. Uh, put it on a put it on a Saturday. Put it on a Sunday. Put it on a time where there's no other wrestling on, and um, showcase it. Put it on t t total nonstop action, new talent showcase, one hour a week on YouTube, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure um, the the views will grow as it goes on. As you get the talent, as you get the lead. Moriarty's. I should bring in the Aiden Princes. I should bring Ovi Christ. Okay, I think that was wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, just I, I'm pretty sure my microphone's working properly. Uh, for some reason that that came up. But anyway, back to it. But back to the. Um, Back to the the new talent showcase. They should do that if Bill Collier is available. If Bill Collier is available, they should definitely, definitely uh, look at that. I know Bill Collier, a great talent, uh, was on AEW Dark a few times, uh, but don't um, don't don't sleep on it. You know, because all these, because sooner or later, AEW and and Ring of Honor and MLW, they're gonna they're gonna scoop up all the good talent. So you have to get out there. You have to create a, a an avenue, an avenue or a showcase where um, new stars are going to want to come in and develop and um, work their way onto the to the main show. That's that's just what the that's what they need to do, in my opinion. I would love to see that. And again, on YouTube, don't put on Impact Plus because people that don't have Impact Plus are not going to subscribe to Impact Plus just to see the new talent showcase. So put it up someplace where everyone can see it. Put it up on YouTube, and um, Take that route. Go that route. That's that's how I feel on that. I mean, I mean, if you want to do it just a, an all knockout show, hey, that's that's something uh, that Scott Demore and uh, Don Callis would have to agree on, of course, and that would have to work out. And I mean, I wouldn't complain about it, but uh, I would prefer to see a new talent showcase with new fresh talent. I mean, bring in Jody Threat, bring in Alexi Nicole. There's uh, so much talent out there that that they could bring in. You know, that's. That's my two cents on uh, the the, total, the TNA brand, the total nonstop action brand that's rumored to be coming back. 
Speaking of uh, talent that's rumored to be coming back, um, I know WWE, they released a, a number of um, talent um, recently, and among them were Samoa Joe, Kalisto, Mickey James, Chelsea Green, uh, I think Bo Dallas uh, was released as well. Uh, Mojo Rawley was released. I know uh, Scott DeMora has indicated that, hey, a couple of those uh, WWE uh, uh, releases, you could find their way into an Impact Wrestling ring. And I know Deanna Perrazzo uh, has uh, recommended uh, that Impact Wrestling bring in Mickey James and Chelsea Green. I'd be all for that. You know, Mickey James, um, top, top talent. I think she's only 40 years old and she's still got uh, some gas left in the tank. Uh, Chelsea Green also um rumored to be coming back um formerly you know chelsea green is very familiar with an impact wrestling and impact being in an impact wrestling ring we're all familiar with chelsea green uh love to see her come back as well and uh diana prazo i mean think just think diana prazo was diana prazo is going to hold that knockout spell for a while and she's looking for new challengers and i think mickey james and chelsea green would be um great opponents great challenges uh for diana prazo uh i don't think she's going to drop that belt for a long long time and uh i'd love to see mickey james and chelsea green also this Kalisto. let's think about Kalisto for a second Kalisto would be absolutely tremendous tremendous in the X division. He would have such fantastic matches with TJP, with Chris Bay, Josh Alexander. Kalisto is tailor-made for the X division. If they're smart, they try to get Kalisto into Impact Wrestling. He's not called by Kalisto. I think it's Samurai, Samurai Del Sol, I think is the name that was his original name. I think he went back to his original name. But they should definitely definitely trying to get him into an impact wrestling on the impact wrestling roster. I mean, he would be tremendous. I mean, he, I would put the X division title on him. Him against Ace Austin would be, would be terrific. I'd put the X division title on Kalisto and let him run with it for a while. If they in fact could get Kalisto, I think that would be a terrific signing. And then there's Samoa Joe. Then there's Samoa Joe. And I know Samoa Joe has done so much in professional wrestling. He's got such um He's got such great history in, in TNA, such great history with, with Ring of Honor as well. I would love to see him back in an Impact Wrestling ring. It doesn't have to be long-term. I don't think he's going to want to sign it long-term. I could be wrong, but I, I would love to see him back for a couple of months. And I just want to see Moose one-on-one -on -one against Samoa Joe. I think that would be fantastic. I think that would be absolutely tremendous. And Josh Alexander one-on-one -on -one against Samoa Joe. Just wow. Absolutely, absolutely tremendous potential there. I would love to see Samoa Joe back. You know, I know I talk about you know, the new talent, but I would love to see these guys. I would love to see um, old faces back as well. Um, so I, as I said, I'd love to see Mickey James, Chelsea Green. Love to see Kalisto coming in. That would be fantastic. And Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe as well. One-on-one -on -one against Moose. Just just. just just thinking about it just gets me excited. I, that would be just a absolutely main event match anywhere in the world. And um, got my fingers crossed that we will uh, that we'll see it happen. And Bo Dallas, I think Bo Dallas was also released. If I I'm pretty sure Bo Dallas was also released. And I think Bo Dallas would would be a good signing as well. I think Bo Dallas would be somebody like a EC3 when he originally signed with TNA a few years ago when Dixie Carter was was running the show, uh, or like a Brian Meyer, someone who wants to prove Vince McMahon wrong, somebody who wants to come in and make them and make them feel like they made a mistake by letting him go. I think you would get that with Bo Dallas, so I think he would be a decent signing as well. But I'm sure Scott Demore has his eyes on a number of these WWE releases, and I'm sure we're going to see two, three, or maybe even four of them uh, come in, whether it's long-term or short-term, I'm not sure, but I'm sure we're going to see, I think for sure we're going to see Mickey James, Chelsea Green back in an Impact Wrestling ring. And as I said, I would love Kalisto and Samoa Joe to come back. So Rebellion is coming up. Rebellion is coming up. And we have, this is this card is absolutely stacked. Let me pull up this card here. This card is absolutely stacked. I, I don't need to run down all the, sh all the matches, but of course, you know, we have um, Rich Swan, the Impact Wrestling uh, World Title Champion uh, versus Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, title for title match. And this is... Man, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. This is going to be such a wonderful, wonderful match. I can't wait for this one. And there's a lot of uh, 
speculation out there on who's going to win. Is it going to be Kenny Omega? Is it going to be Rich Swan? Uh, I know there are a lot of predictions out there. Do you want to hear mine? <laughs> Do you want to hear my predictions, huh? Do you want to hear my predictions? Okay, I'll, I'll give you... <laughs> I'll give you my prediction on the on this uh, on this um, match. I think something screwy is going to happen, and they're both going to walk out with their titles. That's what I'm thinking. I think something screwy is going to happen, and and Rich Swan and uh, Kenny Omega will both um, remain. Um, Rich Swan will Rich Swan will remain the Impact Wrestling World Champion, and Kenny Omega will remain the AEW World Champion. Because I'm thinking back uh, when I was a kid growing up, uh, there was there were a number of NWA versus WWF um, title matches. You know, there was Harley Race versus Bob Backlund at the Garden, title versus title uh, in Florida. We had, uh, I think it was 70, 77, I believe, superstar Billy Graham, the WWF champion versus Harley Race, the NWA champion. Uh, we had uh, 1981, Ric Flair, the NWA champion versus Bob Backlund, the WWF champion, all title versus title matches. Is Nick Bockwinkle went one on one with Ric Flair, AWA title versus the NWA title, title versus title. We we always get a title versus title match, but nobody would become a double champion. It would always end either on a disqualification or a count out, or it would go the time limit draw. And and uh, both um, world champions, both respected world champ, respective world champions, kept their titles. And I think that's what's going to happen here. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes the time limit draw. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes, I think it's a one hour time limit, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to one hour drawer and they both keep their titles. Um, if anyone's going to win, I think it's going to be Kenny Omega. If they do in fact have a winner, I think it's going to be Kenny Omega. I don't, I don't see Rich Swan showing up on AEW with the AEW title. Um, no, I, I think it, 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 it more benefits Impact Wrestling if Kenny Omega has the Impact Wrestling Championship than AEW would benefit if Rich Swan has the AEW Championship. Uh, so if anyone is going to win, I think it's going to be Kenny Omega. And if, if that's the route they're going, if that's the route that they go and Kenny Omega does win the title, then I would say that down the road or the next pay-per-view or, or the next or, – or, Maybe not the next pay per view, but down the road, Moose would um, Moose would make a return and um, challenge Kenny Omega for the Impact Wrestling World Title and save Impact Wrestling from Kenny Omega and his title reign. So that's that's the route that I see it going. But quite frankly, I think I think it's it's we're not going to see um, we're not going to see either title change hands. I think they're both going to leave with their belts. Uh, then we had Finn Juice against Good Brothers. Good Brothers are going to regain. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind the Good Brothers are going to regain. Deanna Perrazzo versus Tennille Dashwood. There's no way, as I said, no way in hell. No way in hell Deanna Perrazzo is going to lose the knockouts title to Tennille Dashwood. Sorry, but no way in hell. Uh, the other title match, the X Division title. A. Sawson versus Josh Alexander versus TJP. I really want Josh Alexander to win this match, but I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling A. Sawson is going to retain. I, I'm going to be rooting for Josh Alexander. He's he's my guy. I love Josh Alexander, but I think when all is said and done, I think A. Sawson is going to retain. And there's a few other matches as well. Not going to go into it because I know um, BQ did a whole preview on it. Um but uh, yeah, so rebellion eight matches eight. Uh, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a really good card. If if you have the opportunity to see it, uh, to watch it, it's gonna be on Fight TV. I would definitely, definitely, definitely order it. It's gonna be an absolutely stacked card. And I just wish it was in front of a crowd. And speaking of crowds, let's talk about crowds for a little bit. MLW on July 10th will be back in front of crowds. Um, AEW wrestling in front of crowds. WWE WrestleMania. They were two nights, 27,000 fans in in the arenas, uh, in the stadium, I should say. So they were in front of crowds. In out in Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling, the crowds are there. Granted, it's in Japan. Let's well, actually, I'm sorry. Let's let's stick with the states. So we had um, MLW. AEW, WWE, all in front of crowds. And we have independent shows that are in front of crowds now as well. It's time for Impact Wrestling to get back in front of a crowd. It's definitely time for them to get back in front of a crowd. I think the next group of tapings, the next group of tapings, definitely, without a doubt, should be in front of a crowd. 
if they have to go to um, if they have to go to Florida, they have to go to Texas or wherever they have to go, um, where they have the okay to get in front of a crowd. As long as everybody's safe, as long as everybody's social distancing, they do all the COVID guidelines, they take care of all the COVID guidelines, keep everybody safe. I think they could be in front of a crowd. I mean, if, if MLW is doing it, Impact Wrestling should be doing it as well. So get back in front of a crowd. I mean, we need a crowd. I mean, I know they have their piped in crowd noise right now. But uh, it's, it's starting to sound a little corny. And uh, I think it's time for Impact Wrestling to start uh, bringing the crowds back. I mean, because I mean, they're, I mean, with the AEW partnership, uh, with the New Japan Pro Wrestling partnership, things are starting to get really, really uh, exciting in Impact Wrestling. And uh, you want a crowd there. You want a crowd. Just think of the crowd, the crowd reaction. If when when Cody, uh, Kenny Omega first walked down the aisle uh, on an Impact Wrestling show, just just imagine the crowd reaction. They, they got to get the crowd back. My opinion, they got to get the crowd back as long as they do it safely and they keep everybody safe. They could do it. Like I said, if MLW is doing it, Impact Wrestling could do it as well. All right, before I uh, wrap this up, um, I want to uh, I want to talk about something real quick. Uh, there was a um, a fan a fan that uh, went on Facebook and uh, obviously is not familiar with, 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 uh, with Chris Saban. Uh, I just thought it was funny. I'm not going to say his name, but I just thought it was funny. He says that, um, that Chris, <laughs> Chris Saban is the next big thing in impact wrestling. <laughs> Chris Saban is the next big thing in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, that Chris Saban, that Chris Saban has so much potential. You know, he he has a potential to have a pretty good, uh, pretty good, pretty good career uh, in Impact Wrestling. He has a pretty good he has a, the potential to to do a couple of good things in professional wrestling. So, um, you know, Chris Saban. You know, I mean, and I mean, why he stopped there? I mean, I know. Uh, <laughs> BQ, BQ saw it and he chimed in by saying that, by uh, by saying that jazz is the future of the of the knockouts division. Oh, uh, and it's funny stuff. Funny stuff that that um, that I know. I, I gotta hand it to the guy. The guy, uh, uh, he's watching Impact Wrestling. He's enjoying it. Uh, I guess he's just not familiar with Chris Saban. You know, and uh, I can't. I'm not saying his name because I don't want to. I don't want to knock him. But uh, uh, as long as he's watching Impact Wrestling and he's enjoying Chris Saban, but it's it's funny how he says that Chris Chris Saban's the, the next big thing in Impact Wrestling. I thought that was um, I thought that was a little humorous. But uh, hey, dude, you know. Thank you for watching Impact Wrestling. Keep watching it. Don't stop, and uh, keep uh, keep rooting for Chris Saban, man. Keep keep rooting for Chris Saban. The next big thing, you know, he might <laughs> he's going. That kid's going places, man. That kid's going places. Anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for listening listening to me today. That's it for me. My name is Lewis Carlin. Good to be back here on Shooting Up North on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye.